pH and leather. They are so important. We rarely learn about it, rarely hear about it. So today we're gonna to dive into something that is essential to pretty much every leather cleaner, every leather conditioner, how you store and maintain leather. And basically, if you've got a leather item, how to keep it looking good for a long time. And then exactly why. So what is pH? All right, for about one minute, we're gonna put on your nerd glasses because we are going to dork town. <laughs> and it's worth it. And then we'll come back to cool town right after. And we'll be cool, we're gonna do an experiment. So pH, here is a pH scale. We'll talk about what that is in a minute, but it's some cool colors. And then we're gonna dive into exactly what pH is. And it is the potential of hydrogen. And that measures exactly how much hydrogen, H plus, which is an acid, and how much hydroxyl, H minus, which is a base, are in a solution. And a solution is pretty much like any kind of mixture that you've got. Um, really any kind of substance is gonna have some combination of acids and bases for the most part. And so this matters because when they come into contact with each other, they're going to try to neutralize and balance. And so if you've got something that's high in acid and something that is a strong base, which means it's down here, they're gonna try to come together and kind of meet in the middle. And in doing that, it's gonna cause a reaction. And this is called the acid-base reaction. And that's often gonna produce two things. One is salt, and the other is water. And these are common in so many places. But then when you think, what can damage leather over time? Salt and water. <laughs> so this reaction becomes really important to proper leather care and maintenance across the board. All right, you're doing great. So let's check out the pH scale. So here, the pH scale runs from one to 14. On the left, it is more acidic, and on the right, it's more basic, alkaline. In the middle, it's neutral. That's around seven. Additionally, this is what's called a logarithmic scale. So what that basically means is that for every step that we go, it's gonna be 10 times that impact. For example, Something with a pH of two is going to be 100 times more acidic than something with a pH of four. Because if we come down here, we're gonna go 10, 100. So that's gonna make a huge difference because something with a pH of nine is going to be 10 million times more basic than something with a pH of two. And for example, a pH of two is like an olive oil. I'm gonna pH of nine, you know, is like a baking soda. So these are pretty common things that we have, and maybe we wouldn't think, well, it's a huge difference. But if you're putting olive oil on leather or using, or using baking soda to clean it, there can be significant impacts that we barely see on the surface, but there's a lot really happening inside. It can make a huge difference. For example, leather has a pH of around 4.5. So here we've got that. Anytime a cleaner or a conditioner with a different pH than the leather is applied, that acid-base reaction is going to occur in the fibers. And it's gonna to try to neutralize and balance out those different pHs. And so, for example, if we're using something like a saddle soap, that's around a pH of 10, where our leather is gonna be, we'll say a pH of around five. So that saddle soap is going to be around 100,000 times more basic than your leather material. Another way to put it, your leather material is gonna be around 100,000 times more acidic than your soap, which is huge. And so when they neutralize, that reaction is gonna happen inside your fibers and that's gonna result in, yep, what we talked about, salt and water. But wait a second, we never see it. Does it really matter? You're making all this up. <laughs> and I get it. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit and we're going to use an experiment to show exactly what's happening. All right, nerd glasses off, cool hats on. So here's an experiment. You've probably seen this before, and this is a really fun one. So here we have vinegar, which is an acid with a pH of around three. And then we're going to have baking soda, which is a base with a pH of around nine. So it's gonna be around 1 million times more basic in that baking soda than our vinegar. When we combine them, they're gonna neutralize and balance one another out. Again, using that, you know, pH reaction, the acid-base reaction. And so when that happens, it's gonna produce, you guessed it, we're gonna have our salt, we're gonna have our water, 
and we're going to have a whole lot of carbon dioxide gas. And that's typically what's going to be happening inside your fibers. So as you see it, think about that. So here we have our baking soda. And here we have our vinegar. And we're going to pour it in and watch what happens. Whoa, there you go. It's your classic volcano. And so what's happening now is it's neutralizing each other. And that acid is coming up a little bit in pH. The base is coming down a little bit. And you're going to get that salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas. So imagine that exact process happening inside your leather fibers when you're cleaning it. And that's exactly what's going on. All right. Let's try another experiment. This time, we're going to use cane molasses. So looking at our scale here, we have our baking soda, which is around 9. And we have our molasses, which is going to be around a pH of 5. So similar to leather. And in that way, we're going to simulate how this reaction is going to happen. So instead of being from around 3 to 9, like we had with our vinegar, we're going to be around five to nine, but this is going to simulate our leather to give you an idea of what's happening there. So it's four levels difference, only 10,000 times more basic, and it's going to be less drastic, I anticipate, than our earlier experiment. We got our baking soda, and here we got our molasses. I should, I should really speed this up. I'll start pouring now. Oh, look at it go. Get your turtles out. It's a race. All right. I'll kind of pour that out a little bit. Now for looking, we're not seeing as strong a reaction at all because we're closer in that pH spectrum. And if you look, it's doing a little bit here. Kind of mix it around a little bit. So it's still reacting, but it's not nearly as significant as with our vinegar. So their reaction, while still happening, is much more subtle, which is exactly what we see when we're doing our leather cleaning. It's happening inside, but we may not even notice it, which is why pH in leather care is something that's so often overlooked because it's barely noticeable. However, the impact can be huge. So how does all this relate to what we do day to day, um, especially to cleaners and conditions and you know standard leather care? The first is that most everything we clean and condition with has a pH level. Um, that can be all kinds of different you know, household cleaners, it can be specialized leather cleaners, and some are going to react more strongly than others. Some are going to react more slowly, causing damage over time. And it's essentially where the greater differences on this pH scale between the two, the leather itself and whatever cleaner you're using, is going to be how significant and immediate those reactions are. And even if we use something that is only one or two points away, that will still have a reaction. It'll just happen more slowly and over time. So maybe over five or 10 years, you know, instead of a much shorter period. So it's important to realize that even though it's not visible, it still can have great impact. So it's gonna be most helpful to choose leather cleaners and conditioners that are pH balanced. And as closely to a neutral pH such as a seven or close to a leather pH, which is around 4.5 to five. At the neutral element seven, it reacts differently than something around it like a six or an eight, which is kind of counterintuitive. But on this scale, if it's a neutral seven, it's not gonna have much of an impact. Or if you are right around the leather 4.5 point of 4.5 to five, you will also not have much of an impact. So look for something that either has the pH of around leather 
or is a neutral around seven. Because anything eight or above, you know, or six or down, you're gonna start to see those impacts of the pH. And it can be helpful to check things out. For example, saddle soap is really popular for certain things, and that's gonna be around a pH of 10. So almost double that of leather. And then certain cleaners and conditioners, uh, like oils, like mink oil and neat's foot oil, that's gonna be a little higher than leather itself. So it's gonna be a really cool thing to kind of dive into the things we've already got, what we know, what we're familiar with, and then get a little more of an understanding of what their impacts might be on the leather that we're using it on. So now you've got a little more knowledge about pH and why it's so important to leather care, the salt and water that the pH reaction produces, and that's gonna be part of your leather care as well. The salt and water that are parts of the pH reaction, and then the different elements that go into the pH in terms of their volumes, their values, and how it's going to impact your leather care. So if you have any questions about how this works, or if you have any experiences uh, with different cleaners or conditioners, or just how pH has affected leather over time, let us know. And there you have it. Until next time.